Hi, my name is Phil. I like to talk about politics. In this video, I'd like to discuss the extent to which the government is easing the lockdown, uh, it being not so much a, a gamble or a risk, as many are putting it, but that we can see very clearly the consequences in the form of other countries who have eased restrictions in different ways before us. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So, there are a number of countries who have taken a range of approaches to the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, apparently, it's not at all fair for us to compare ourselves to those countries, according to the government, although they like to compare themselves to other countries every single day. Now, the focus of this video really is going to be on the consequences of easing lockdown in the way that we have and the impact on the dreaded second wave. And I, I don't use the term dreaded flippantly. Epidemiologists have made it clear that the second wave of such epidemics tends to be worse than the first. And I've already talked recently about how, even if that were not statistically the case, the politics would almost certainly make the second wave worse for us anyway. Now, one startling lesson that we should all be taking note of in terms of how not to ease restrictions is some parts of the United States. Now, a number of states have increased uh, or experienced sorry, a, a massive surge in the infection rate as a result of coming out of uh, you know the restrictions before they were ready and now I mean because the US in many ways is like the UK in that it's not that they've come out too soon as in they're not allowing enough time with the time that they've had when they've had restrictions in place, they haven't done enough, a lot of parts of the uh, US anyway, have not done enough to really get control of the infection rate. Now, experts look at graphs like this and wonder if America is even really trying to contain the virus. I mean, look at this. And bear in mind that European graph includes the UK. And yet it's, ex it's America's example that we're following. You know, we've removed restrictions without ever getting control of the infection rate to the point where a solid test, trace and an isolate program could do the heavy lifting. Not that we have that system in place for when it will be able to cope. Um, you know, even if we get the infections down to manageable level, we don't we don't have good enough testing or tracing. Um, so what I did is I thought I'll have a look at the data, see what's happening. Now, this is the official data from the governments, which, of course, will be an underestimate in terms of new cases, obviously, but also in terms of deaths even. Um, now, I've looked at our own data as well as that from Germany and the United States. I use Germany for a few reasons. One, um, I know it's just tightened some restrictions this week in some regions. Two, nobody can complain that it isn't a comparable nation they've got a larger population than we do and of course based in europe as well and three they aren't run by a graduate from clown college so i looked at the number of cases in the last week and from the week before that and i also did the same for deaths so if we take a little look now in terms of new cases you can see that they have fallen for both the uk and germany but massively increased in the us now, the danger, of course, is that people see the fact that oh, it's falling in the UK, the number of cases, and, and feel confident about coming into close contact with lots of people uh, as actively encouraged by the government, despite the fact that, you know, they, they keep doing things like go out and enjoy yourself. Yes, go to the beaches, go to the cinemas. Oh, the pubs are going to be opening soon. Go out, go out, go out. Stop going out. Go out and enjoy yourself. Will you stop? And, and so that way, when it all goes wrong, they can say, well, we whispered for them to stop whilst we were shouting for them to go out and, and cram themselves into tight spaces. Now, the problem with that, as I say, if you, you've got this confidence that, that, oh, you know, the number of cases going down, only to find yourself on that path that the US followed. And when you think about the lead into all this, it's such a long time between action and consequence as a result of the time it takes for symptoms to develop when you are infected and then for the time which the real figures the death figures the ones we all want to avoid uh, will feature as well and you know despite the way newspapers like the express will try and paint it you know you, you could 
easily get the impression in Britain that the death rate is going down. Easily. But our death rate isn't actually coming down. You know, this week, if you look at the, the figure, I totted up the figures from the last week. And it fell by 16 compared to the previous week. That is essentially staying the same when you've got a number of deaths that's basically around about, well, over 900 for the week. Uh, well over 100 a day. Uh, you know, and, and the Express, you know, just over a week ago was saying, oh, death rates below 100 a day. No, well over 100 a day this week. It was well over 100 a day last week. It was well over 100 a day when they were reporting that. It's been well over 100 for months now. And, and deaths, of course, lag actual infections, like I say. So if a load of people, oh, I don't know, let's think of an example. Let's say they go and ram themselves onto a beach and do this up and down the country in lots of beaches with even less protective clothing than you'd wear at home in bed. Then, you know, the symptoms will appear a few weeks later. So then you might start to see the number of cases going up a few weeks later, if, of course, we're testing enough to be able to see that. But then the figures that can't be denied will be the deaths later on, at least the excess deaths, even if it's not tied to COVID. But I think it should be these days. Then and that will be sometime later still. So it's some it's a long time before we actually get to see if what we're doing right now is sensible or not. And when testing, as I say, isn't all that great, sometimes it takes longer than might otherwise be the case to really get a handle on how the infection is doing across the country. And the reason why I wanted to sort of look at Germany there is because what you can see is Germany, in parts of Germany, imposed more restrictions uh, in the last week, I gather. And yet, if you look at the figures across Germany, the number of cases come down. And you think, well, why have they done that? Because you don't look at it as a national picture. You look at it as a regional picture. Different regions in Germany have seen spikes. So different regions in Germany have reimposed some restrictions. And then when they've got a handle on it, they'll, they'll ease them a little bit. And if it's fine, it's fine. And, and if it spikes again, they'll reimpose. And you can do this fine tuning because they've got a really good dialogue going on with the people in Germany. And also... You've got this regional approach, which we sort of know works. You know, uh, we've, what we've got here in the UK is we've now got a situation with Scotland, for example, managing to report very low numbers of deaths now. There's a suggestion that they might actually restrict people from travelling there from England, at least make them, them quarantine themselves. Now, this wouldn't just be a political stunt, although... It would be a highly politically contentious issue in the UK. But, you know, I gather regions in Germany, for example, coming back to, to Germany, sometimes have travel restrictions in place between themselves as necessary. So it's not that it is inherently uh, politically contentious, but it would be in this country. But Because it, it would be a major humiliation for Boris Johnson, who insists on taking a whole nation approach when every other comparable country seems to understand that actually what works is the regional approach. And, and although you might argue the American president doesn't, just the way the United States is set up, you know, in that the sort of confederacy model allows individual states to make, take their own measures anyway. So you've naturally got a regional approach in there anyway. So we're, I mean, we're out on our own. And, you know, because you, need, you do need a regional approach. Why ease restrictions in a region where the infection rate is on the increase, as it's believed to be in the north of England, for example? And by the same token, why retighten restrictions where it has massively declined? And needless to say, experts around Britain are looking at the way the government is handling these restrictions with complete dismay. One of the independent sage scientists said that he was concerned that Chief Medical Officer Chris Whitty was saying that he expected COVID to remain at significant levels for the best part of another year, right into 2021. Now, Professor Scully said that he found this level of ambition terrifying, is the word he used. And I think many of us would agree. You know, we remember the time when the government tried to say, oh, you know, if we keep deaths down to 20,000, we'll have done a good job. And we were all thinking, I, I, that's a good job? 
killing 20,000 people? Well, we've sailed past that a long time ago. You know, and now we've got this other one. And, and it's, are, are people accepting this? That, you know, the government are basically saying, yeah, we, we're not even going to try and get hold of this for about a year. When there are countries who have reduced the impact of this virus down to negligible levels already, how is it possible that we don't even have a plan to do so this year? You know, and he noted that the estimate of three to five thousand new cases a day and a daily death rate still in three figures, which is definitely the case. He says that is a recipe for headed for an uncontrollable second wave, not just a second wave, an uncontrollable second wave. And, and that is something that should concern us all, because the government have been able to influence events. They have had some control over the pandemic. They have chosen not to exercise that control uh, to the fullest of their abilities. We could, according to experts, find ourselves in a situation where the government will not be able to control it. They will, have, they will have given up their power to control it to the point where they'll, even if we to change the government overnight to a, a, a competent one, it, I mean, it would make a difference. Of course it would. But you, they couldn't get control of it. And I don't want to labour the point too much but because I've mentioned it before and inevitably I'll have to do so again. But we don't have the testing up to the level necessary to catch enough infections early on. We don't have the tracing system in place to cope with even much lower levels of infection, much less what we have right now. We've not pumped resources into regional structures in order to manage the infections on a region by region basis. We've got a government that's engineered a situation whereby it's politically almost impossible to actually reimpose a lockdown. And to cap it all off, the government is massively resisting learning lessons. They've blocked the idea of a public inquiry, which is the best way of learning lessons and putting things right before we're hit by an uncontrollable second wave. But if the government were to at least hold a genuine internal inquiry, keeping the results secret, they might still learn something and put some things right. But they won't because they'd rather remain ignorant than risk an official report being leaked that will highlight how dangerously incompetent they have been during the outbreak. And you can't help but look around the world, other countries, and see how far they've come. Some took action very quickly and got on top of things without too many missteps. Some made bad errors early on, but then turned it around. We seem to be the only country in Europe, at least, that hasn't come forward at all. We started out by refusing to follow the lead of other countries before, because you know we thought we knew better. And we're still doing so. What experts have been trying to point out with regard infections is just how they spike up in different parts of a country. We've seen that in countries that test properly and have proper data and, and also, of course, have the facilities for regional responses. Now, our government spent 10 years removing those regional facilities, but has done nothing to try and build back up some of those structures that they'd previously kicked down. In some ways, it could be argued that the first wave was never going to be brilliant, given the position our healthcare systems were in, but we could have at least improved it. And that complete failure to hold a mature conversation with the public about the issues has also set us up for a fall. So just as in the US, where lots of people are not convinced about the need for protective measures like face masks or social distancing, they think it's a political issue. And that means you've got whole areas of the country seeing massive spikes because they're not taking precautions. And that massive surge isn't waking them all up. It's not making them think, oh, oh, yeah, we need to listen to the experts. No, no, no. You know, they're, so they're going to carry on inflicting this damage upon themselves. It'll keep happening. And in this country, too. You know, it is true. We don't have a head of government telling people that distancing or face masks are a socialist plot. We can at least give Boris Johnson some credit there. But he's also not emphasising the importance of it. People can go into shops in the UK without even being encouraged to wear face masks, much less be compelled to. This is why when I go to a store, I am frequently the only person in that store, even a large supermarket, with a face mask on. So anyway, there it is. Those are my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. If you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.